Hi guys, this is Dr. Mac with my first video. This is one of the most frequently asked questions that I've seen on the page, on the Facebook groups, uh, even on my page, a lot of inbox and on my personal page. Like, you know, how can I save those 10 minutes? What is the technique? How can I save those 10 to 20 minutes that I normally waste on the putty? And can I actually start doing the putty and do other things so I can save that time? First thing, first thing, I want to stop all of you with all those thoughts getting in your mind. First thing, you have to understand that this is not a waste of time. This is the most important thing. It is a part of getting a nice crown and it is also part of getting a beautiful provisional crown. And if you know how to make a good putty like this, your provisional crown, you can do that in less than five minutes. Yes, less than five minutes. I, with my technique that I follow, that I just, you know, I started doing it, doing it, and I, I'll try it this way. And I like to improvise, you know, I, I get and learn all the techniques from everyone, but then I try to create my own technique that suits me. And that what I try to advise everyone as well. You can follow uh, what people are saying. You can take good tips and tricks from people, but don't completely follow everyone. There may be some things that you're more comfortable in doing and someone else is comfortable in doing something differently. So don't completely follow someone. Just try to follow the techniques. You need to know the right technique. And then what you need to do is basically make your own technique and make it work okay so for today i'm just going to show you how to do a nice putty and again guys number one thing this is very crucial so it's not a waste of time so consider it as a part of the provisional crown task or a crown prep task if you don't have a good putty you will waste at least 40 minutes, 50 minutes doing a provisional crown that I've seen candidates and students doing it. All right, my stand's moving. Let's fix this one first. Okay, yes, where was I? Okay, yeah. So for a provisional crown, you need a really nice putty if you want it done less than 10 minutes. Yes, less than 10 minutes. And if you need a nice crown prep, this is more like a good guide for us. I always tell people don't rely completely on the putty. Do not do that. It would be the biggest mistake you will do. However, it is a good guide. And after a while, when you do crown prep, you don't even need a putty. You can just see the crown prep and you can say or tell that, you know, how much reduction it is. But still, especially with the occlusions, with the molars, even at the front teeth, sometimes it can be a bit tricky to find out with edges and teeth or with the cusp or grooves with the uh, previous back molars. So best to have a guide. So let me show you today uh, with my technique, what I like to do is I can make three parties in less than seven minutes. Yes, so the concept we need to understand is what we normally do with a putty or any impression we take is we use the putty and in the clinic they use light body on it and then put it back on the patient's mouth. So you get those fine details that you need for the crown prep or the provisional crown. Similar concept we use with heavy body and light body. So use heavy body and then you use, you know, the light body on the tooth area where you have done the crown prep. And with those fine details, we need to capture from light body and then heavy body goes on top. Now we don't have heavy body in the exam. You don't have light body in the exam. We only have this putty. So to improvise this technique, what you need to do is We'll use this big chunk, but then to replicate that light body, we'll use just a very fine, thin layer of the same putty you're utilizing. But the only thing we need to make sure we do is our putty, the, the thin layer that we put on top is not set. So the outer side is set, but the inner side is so thin and it's so like on a medium set stage at that side that it flows everywhere. And when it flows and when it sets properly, it gives you those fine details. So let me bring my model here and let's make a putty. Okay, 
so i'm gonna do on the four six four five four seven considering if i'm doing a four six because with the uh, anterior tooth there's not much of a problem with the posterior tooth because you have cusp anatomy and you need to capture it very nicely so we will do a nice four six here to find out if you can do it properly or not okay i hope it's clear for everyone all right, let, let's come in mixing the putty. So you need two good portions and let's start mixing. And then something I like to use is this. So just take your hand and then just do this. So it's an equal set. It's equal set. So just rub it in your hand and then. And you need the color cons consistency should be like a one smooth color. You can't see two different colors. So at this stage, at this stage, when I feel it's still quite flowy, take this much out. And then let's put it here. And you go into dental, go into dental on top make sure we have a nice layer see how thin it is that you can start to see the occlusal anatomy now we need this because we just need those fine details once it's done make it like a box yes make it like a box like a tall box and then put it like that And then we need to make sure we have same good thickness on the buckle and on the lingual side. This is very, very essential. Because if you don't have like a nice thick putty, it can cause some troubles for you. Because it will bend, it will keep moving, and it won't give you that nice fine details that you're looking and it won't be very reliable because if if a putty can bend how can you rely on a crown prep how about you relying on a putty which is lingual 0 0.8 and which is basically one millimeter and you end up doing one millimeter when you need 0 0.8 or on a buckle you end up doing 1.5 when it's 1.2 you need or you end up doing 1.1 when you're looking for 1.2 so you know these things can make a big difference with passing and failing the exam so be very very careful now this is completely set this is like rock hard right now but i want to leave it for another 30 seconds and once it's good i'll show you guys so what i do normally with my technique seven minutes three parties once i feel it's about to set i start mixing the next one i start mixing the next one so this goes out the next one goes in straight away and then I start mixing the next one. So that comes out. The third one goes in straight away. So it's like a back to back, back to back quick process. And once everything comes out, it all gets done in seven to eight minutes. I just take a bit longer. So even if you take 10 minutes, it shouldn't take any longer than 10 minutes for three putties. Use one for crown prep. See how good it is both ways. Buckle lingual, you need both like enough thickness if you can appreciate from here this is our arch so this buckle this lingual enough thickness yeah so one for crown prep and then use two for provisional why two for provisional you save one just in case you take it out and there's some problem with your provisional material uh, pro temp uh, and it has some flaws you do you can't use the same putty because it won't give you that shiny appearance so that save that last one for a backup so one for the crown prep and when you remove it just be very 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 easy on it take your time no rush wiggle 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 and look at look at how beautiful the contact is there's no breakage. How good the occlusal anatomy is. Look at that. This is beautiful. If you appreciate, look at the occlusal anatomy. How good this is. 
Now the last stage is how to cut the putty, which is another crucial step. If you don't know how to cut the putty correctly, your provisional material won't flow. And that causes another problem. I don't want to cut it on my Mac. <laughs> Let's put it on this side. And then, so this is the tooth we want. So there are two ways to cut the putty. Either you cut half of the edges in tooth and make it smaller like something like this, which is still good. Or, so the, so the material flows here. Another thing you can do is, which I personally love to do is, just give some floor like openings of the interdental area. That's what they professionally do in the clinics as well. Because we just need that opening for the excess material to go out. So you can do either like this, these openings that I've made interdentally, see interdental, or if you can't do that, just keep it simple for yourself. Just less stress, keep it simple. Make sure you take your time and have a nice clean cut. And then the next one, just cut that as well. Half a tooth. And then like what I have done, see how thick it is on both sides? Don't give it on an interdental, give a free cut. Just on the buckle, I would like to have one. So the material flows. Just be careful, don't go inside that margin. I just want to cut a bit here. And that's what you need. Now I appreciate the thickness. You can't bend this putty. Even if I try, you can't bend this putty. This is what you need. Now, this is a very reliable tool for crown preps. This is a beautiful tool to get that beautiful provisional crown that you need. And when you make a putty like this, in this limited time, this will make your provisional crown as beautiful as you want in less than five minutes. And you don't have to do any finishing. You don't have to do any polishing. You just have to trim the sides with soft legs. How much time does it take? Three minutes, four minutes? That's all you need to do. And so the topic for today was, is putty an important tool? Is it essential to use a putty or is it a waste of time? So my answer to you all, my colleagues, my friends, people who are learning, I always tell people I'm still learning as well every day. I learn from everyone, even from you guys. Uh, so, you know, this is what you need. This is very essential and this is not a waste of time. If you do it properly, less than 10 minutes, three parties, this will really help you with those crown preps. And also, it will help you with that uh, amazing provisional crown that you need. And for inf infection control point of view, these are normally given in the exam as... Uh, disposable one so as soon as you use it just go and chuck it in the shops the whole thing because it's a sh it's a disposable when the exam next video what i'll be conducting will be all about infection control so i have a post on my page and uh, do you have any questions scroll down on the page there's infection control post and uh, go and you know you have any queries do you have any questions you know, go and post it on it. I will be covering all those questions in a proper video post of infection control. So you don't have to stress about infection control anymore. Infection control is a big thing in Australia. You know, they are very concerned about it. So any minor problem, it's a straight fail. They won't neglect that. So you have to be really, you know, you careful about infection control. The more you learn the, is less. So if you have any questions, you know, go and comment on the post that I've posted on my page, ADC Help with Dr. Mac. If you like this uh, idea, and if you did like this video, tell me about it, send me a message. If you wanna share a review, if you wanna give a comment so I can know and get some feedback about if this was helpful or, or should I do more videos like this or not. And at the same time, if you find it helpful, you know, share it with people so you know more people can get benefit from it. Uh, until next time, 
I will see you guys very soon with another video. Have a lovely day. Bye.